Welcome to a journey into the intriguing and enigmatic world of the Xenomorph universe, where an unusual substance known as the Black Goo has mystified fans and probably even riddled filmmakers like Ridley Scott. A substance with the power to mutate biomes and accelerate evolution, the Black Goo has left a trail of destruction and chaos in its wake. But what is this substance, and where did it come from? Was it created by some otherworldly force? Or did it emerge from the depths of the universe itself? And what is the Black Goo's connection with the royal jelly that Xenomorph Queens produce? In this video, we'll explore the origins of the Black Goo, its purpose, and the devastating effect it has on everything it touches. So, fasten your seatbelts and let's delve deep into the heart of the unknown as we unravel the mysteries of the Black Goo in the Xenomorph universe. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. That's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Number 1. What is Black Goo, the deadly elixir of life? Chemical or Agent A0-3959X9115 was the term given to this mesmerizing liquid with godly powers of creating life and terraforming planets, but the chemical also had the potential of destroying all life forms on a celestial body. Since the scientific name is just too long and confusing, it's colloquially known by other names such as Black Liquid, Pathogen, and Black Goo. But you'd be surprised to know that Marvel recently canonized this scientific name. Moving on, the substance is essentially an extremely powerful and virus-like mutagenic pathogen that houses millions and millions of microorganisms. It is these microorganisms that give the liquid its living attributes. Yes, the Black Goo itself is a living thing. Serving as both a creator of life and a biological weapon, the Black Goo is believed to have been created by the engineers, but there are sound theories that suggest otherwise. In fact, a specific strain of the Black Goo is also found in the royal jelly produced by a xenomorph queen. This jelly leads to the formation of other queens or Praetorians. I will take you through these aspects and theories as well, but first, let's learn more about this deadly elixir of life and study its effects. To begin with, let's look at the description of the effects of Black Goo as presented in the Alien role-playing game, which says this, While it exists in a viscous liquid form, it atomizes when released in the atmosphere, killing or altering all living things unlucky enough to be within range. Simply put, any living thing that comes into direct contact with the Black Goo will either die horribly, give birth to monsters, or become a monster themselves. Michael Fassbender's David studied the black goo and its effects on various life forms, including humans, for over a decade and concluded that the pathogen was essentially a weapon used to cleanse entire planets of unwanted fauna. And the benefit was that such a cleansing did not demand the use of any fire, ammunition, radiation, or similar forces that would hurt the geology of the target planet or moon. Sounds like a pretty eco-friendly genocide. The first step of this environmental genocide would be introducing the black liquid to the organisms through physical contact, such as ingestion, and in some cases, through airborne spores. Once the unfortunate subject successfully comes into contact with the liquid, they'll go through one of the following results. Talk to me. Hey, look at me. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Can you walk? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Number two, the three fates of the infected. A. Immediate death. Hosts whose bodies are incompatible with the liquid find themselves dead immediately. Or, more accurately, other people find them dead. Yeah, that's, that's logically more accurate. B. Creation of anathema or abominations. Those unlucky few who don't immediately die are the ones who are compatible with the black liquid. They undergo horrific transformations and mutations and end up developing highly aggressive traits. These guys are called anathema or simply abominations. This effect of the pathogen was observed firsthand during the USCSS Prometheus's mission on LV-223, where geologist Fifield was exposed to it. The black goo caused him to become unrecognizably mutated and lash out at his crewmates. Additionally, Fifield received extraordinary resilience, allowing him to withstand multiple gunshot wounds. However, his ultimate demise required the combined efforts of several violent assaults. Furthermore, the black liquid also infected several worms that resided in the engineer temple. 
converting them into the fearsome Hammerpedes. These creatures possessed a host of new abilities, including acidic blood and a remarkable capacity for regeneration. Although the latter attribute is not entirely unheard of among flatworms on Earth, the Hammerpedes' ability to regenerate was far more expedient, suggesting that the chemical can catalyze the development of a host's innate capabilities. C. Developing a Parasite Within Oftentimes, the victims infected with the black goo find themselves housing a deadly parasite within them. In some cases, such victims do not go through a mutation like the anathemas do, and at other times, the anathemas themselves gestate such a parasite. These parasites, in turn, can impregnate other hosts, and this secondary impregnation leads to the formation of the neomorph, a hybridized predator, and definitely a genetic cousin of the xenomorphs. Charlie Holloway was exposed to the pathogen and experienced physical mutation before he was killed by Meredith Vickers to prevent the virus from spreading. It was observed that the pathogen impacted his reproductive system, leading to a bizarre conception that resulted in the impregnation of his partner, Elizabeth Shaw, with the trilobite. It remains unclear whether his sperm was mutated or if he was carrying a trilobite that somehow entered Shaw although the latter is deemed more plausible since Shaw was sterile. The preference of trilobites to move into female hosts and whether Holloway would have naturally given birth to the trilobite is not known. While Shaw was exposed to the infected Holloway and engaged in sexual intercourse with him, she was not infected with the pathogen itself and only received the trilobite embryo suggesting that the black liquid does not transmit through sexual content. However, it does seem to affect the reproductive system of its host, as evidenced by the presence of an umbilical cord-like structure linking the trilobite to Shaw during its removal. But of course, all of these gruesome effects are but child's play when compared to the other things that chemical A0-3959X91-15 can do. Organic. Number 3. The True Power of Black Liquid The pathogen's impact on its host appears to be unpredictable, resulting in unique mutations each time it infects a new subject. However, it does appear to have a consistent effect of accelerating the healing process, albeit with a dangerous consequence for those suffering from cancer, as it can exacerbate the condition to the point of fatality. One of the proposed methods to counteract the virus is the utilization of a construct as a filter, as suggested by astrobiologist Francis Lane. This hypothesis was put to the test when Eldon was deliberately exposed to the pathogen, leading to his transformation into a hybrid between a synthetic and an engineer. Eldon appeared to become a carrier of the virus, causing vegetation to sprout wherever he touched, and even triggering mutation in a yaucha through a mere bite. This story takes place in the Fire and Stone series, which remains one of the most fascinating comics released by Dark Horse. Francis Lane, who is suffering from a deadly disease, stumbles upon a lake, not filled with water, but with black goo. And he deduces that the black goo is not just a single genetic makeup, but it has every genetic makeup, like a vast pool. While some are unidentifiable, others are terrestrial, and the substance is actively churning. As I mentioned earlier, Francis wanted to use the liquid for its regenerative growth properties. The heightened aggression and terrible growth caused by the black goo can theoretically be tamed by running it through a synthetic like like Eldon, but the practical results are completely unpredictable. Furthermore, in Fire and Stone Omega, it is revealed that the liquid has transformed the topography of the moon LV-223, bringing it to life. Eldon merges with the mountain, and by extension, the moon itself. And what's most intriguing is that the black goo can bring about evolution worth millions of years in a matter of hundreds. Can you imagine how fascinating this is? It's just that the mutation is so rapid and potent that organisms fail to sustain it. Number 4. How was the black goo created? Well, it's been hinted several times that the engineers created the black goo, but there's been no definitive answer. So why not do a contemplative examination of the origins of the goo? We've already explored the nature of the black goo, but to understand who created it, it's necessary to explore why it was created in the first place and who its intended targets were. It's largely believed that the xenomorphs were the result of the black goo, but what if it was the other way around? According to one particular theory, the engineers didn't create the xenomorphs, but rather found them already fully evolved in their deadly form. Despite recognizing the xenomorphs as perfect killing machines, the engineers sought to harness their destructive power. 
To achieve this goal, the engineers deconstructed the xenomorph's DNA and extracted the base material for the black goo. The black goo, derived from the xenomorph's DNA, served as a potent tool for the engineers to either seed life on other planets or obliterate entire civilizations. Both the xenomorphs and the black liquid shared the characteristic of being living parasites, thereby lending credence to this theory. This also explains why the xenomorph royal jelly contains strains of the black goo, but there exists another wild theory behind the creation of the black liquid, and it involves predators. But for this to be true, we have to assume that the alien and predator franchises had forever been connected. Anyways, it's quite possible that the predators may have been the driving force behind the creation of the black goo. As avid hunters, it is postulated that the predators would have seen the engineers, an advanced alien race, as worthy prey. In an effort to eliminate this threat, the engineers may have sought to create a powerful weapon that would neutralize the predators once and for all. Enter the black goo, a substance with the potential to wipe out entire populations of beings. However, as seen in Prometheus, the creation and use of the black goo proved to be a fatal mistake for the engineers. The substance went awry and resulted in the deaths of many of their own. This failure may have contributed to the disappearance of the engineers as a whole, leaving only a few survivors who seemed resigned to their fate. Number 5. How Does the Black Goo Accelerate Mutation? The black goo is renowned for its potent and mutagenic properties, causing rapid and unpredictable mutations in living organisms. Despite its notoriety, the exact means by which the black goo accelerates mutation is not fully understood although several factors have been identified. One such factor is the complex mix of organic and inorganic compounds within the black goo, which can interact with living cells in various ways. The substance contains a plethora of enzymes and other biochemical compounds that have the ability to break down and alter DNA and other biomolecules present in living organisms. Additionally, the effects of the black goo appear to depend heavily on the circumstances of exposure, with different organisms displaying varying reactions to the same amount of the substance based on their genetic makeup, environmental factors, and other unknown factors. It is notable that the black goo seems to exert a particularly strong effect on reproductive cells, such as sperm and eggs. Exposure to the substance can cause rapid and unpredictable mutations in these cells, which can then be passed on to offspring. The pathogen within the black goo is capable of infecting a host and imitating a gestation process that results in the emergence of a hybridized parasitic life form. David's experiments on Planet 4 provide a clear illustration of this phenomenon. The resulting hybrid creatures, such as the trilobite on LV-223 and the insect-like moats on Planet 4, pose a severe threat to any host that they infect, often leading to death upon emergence. Once these parasites emerge, they actively seek out another host to attack or infect. The speed and intensity of the mutation process is highly variable, depending on the amount and manner of exposure to the virus. For instance, Holloway's mutation occurred at a slower rate due to ingesting only a tiny drop of the black liquid, whereas Eldon and Fifield's exposure was instantaneous and horrific, as they both took heavy doses of the chemical, and honestly, at this point, I don't even want to call it a chemical. This stuff is something else entirely, if you know what I mean. High doses of the virus can cause the mutation process to happen so rapidly that the body breaks down, leading to the quick death of the victim, as was the case with the sacrifice engineer. However, it remains uncertain if the liquid consumed by the sacrifice engineer is indeed the same type of black goo as the rest. I have a humble theory to back this. The black goo has the ability to break organisms down to their DNA, and it then recombines their genetic material to create new life forms. It appears that the genetic material of the host organism can influence the characteristics of the new life forms created. For instance, humans appear to have inherited certain traits from the engineers, such as a humanoid form, two eyes, a nose, and a large brain, because they were created using the genetic material of the engineers via the black goo. In the rest of the film Prometheus, the urns containing the black goo seem to be a weaponized version of the mutagen. The engineers appear to have weaponized the black goo by incorporating the genetic material of one or more highly lethal predators into it, in a process similar to the seeding of the goo with engineered DNA in the opening scene of the movie. Organisms exposed to this weaponized black goo are mutated to create new life forms that resemble these super predatory creatures. Number 6. The effects of the black goo on life forms. A. Mutated engineer. 
the liquid appears to have different effects on the engineers depending on the film. In Prometheus, the sacrificial engineer ingested a small amount of the pathogen and promptly began to dissolve, spawning new life in the surrounding waters. As the planet was likely Earth, it appears that the engineers intended to create humans. However, in Alien Covenant, David unleashed a large amount of the liquid on an engineer city with devastating results. The engineers seemingly dissolved in a more violent manner than in Prometheus, and the pathogen also appeared to eradicate all local wildlife. It seems that in this instance, the pathogen was being utilized as a weapon. B. Mutated Human I could talk about Fifield and Holloway, but that would just become superfluous, so let's just move on to the next one. C. Mutated Predator In the comic Fire and Stone, Alien vs. Predator, a fascinating question is explored. What happens when a predator is infected with the black goo pathogen? During a fierce battle between predators and xenomorphs on a spaceship, a predator hunter is bitten on the arm by the black goo infected android Eldon. Within minutes, he retreats from the fight and undergoes a dramatic transformation. The Yaucha undergoes a monstrous mutation, becoming unrecognizable from his former self. He now possesses ten mandibles instead of four and develops black eyes. Additionally, he gains immense strength easily able to break through the skulls of other Yauchas and even tear off their arms. An extra arm emerges from his left shoulder, adding to his grotesque appearance. The psychological impact of the mutation is equally disturbing, as he develops cannibalistic tendencies and is seen devouring the corpse of a Yaucha he killed. Interestingly, the mutated Yaucha dons a bio-helmet with a jawbone like the Berserker Predator and has grown to an unusual height, resembling an upgrade Predator. Despite having been blooded and respected by his people, the mutated Yaucha turns rogue, becoming excessively violent towards everyone, including his own kind. D. Elden, the mutated android. Elden, originally a synthetic, underwent a dramatic transformation as a result of the Black Goo's infection. His humanoid form was stripped of most of its cutaneous material and his entire body was now coated in white and reddish hues, with two tube-like tendrils emerging from his back. Elden proved to be a formidable opponent, capable of taking on multiple xenomorphs and yauchas simultaneously, and he even withstood a blast from a plasma caster without any signs of distress, regenerating his damaged flesh in a matter of seconds. What's more, Elden's mutation granted him the ability to morph his body at will. During a skirmish with a group of predators, he transformed the flesh of his stomach into jaws, with which he attacked and bit one of the hunters, causing the unfortunate Yaucha to undergo a mutation of its own. Elden's transformation also included gaining a degree of control over the xenomorphs, and his skeletal appearance now bore a vague resemblance to that of the alien species. Additionally, the tendrils on his back, which were initially assumed to be purely ornamental, later developed into an immature extra set of arms. E. Hammerpedes, Trilobites, and Deacon. These three monstrosities, each more vicious than the last, were all the results of the Black Goo. The Trilobite came into the world thanks to Elizabeth Shaw, and the Deacon was the Trilobite's work on an engineer. F. Mutated Plant Life. David's release of the Black Goo over the Engineer City in Alien Covenant not only annihilated the entire engineer population, but it also had a significant impact on the planet's plant life much like what happened in the Fire and Stone comics. The pathogen brought about the formation of a new type of fungus in various locations throughout the city. This fungus emitted airborne moats when disturbed, which ultimately infected two crew members of the US CSS Covenant and served as the basis for the Neomorphs. Although the Neomorph life cycle was more efficient than that of the Facehuggers, the Xenomorph remained a more perfect creature in comparison. G. Mutated Fish in the aftermath of the US CSS Prometheus crashing into the juggernaut ship, the black goo pathogen permeated LV-223, leading to a striking transformation of the planet's landscape. Over time, the once barren planet evolved into a lush environment teeming with jungles and wildlife, at least in the vicinity of the downed vessels. In the events of Prometheus, Fire and Stone, the arrival of the research and recovery vessel Geryon offered a glimpse into this curious phenomenon. The planet's small bodies of water, for instance, became home to a peculiar breed of fish, bearing double mouths, and their features bore an eerie resemblance to the Deacon and Shark hybrids. H. Human-Xenomorph hybrid formed due to amalgamation 
The events that transpired in Aliens, Fire, and Stone were nothing short of strange and unsettling. Several colonists from Hadley's Hope managed to flee to LV-223 aboard the Onager, only to encounter a host of horrors. The engineer juggernaut was still oozing the black goo pathogen, and to make matters worse, the colonists had unknowingly transported a cargo container carrying aliens from LV-426. Chaos and carnage ensued as the aliens began their assault on the colonists, with only a few managing to escape to the mountains. However, the black goo proved to be a catalyst for even more gruesome mutations, as one of the xenomorphs fused with a human colonist to form a grotesque hybrid. Despite the added weight of the colonist on its belly, the hybrid maintained much of the xenomorph's lethal agility and was still capable of leaping with alarming ease. So you see, that's what happens when xenomorphs get infected with black goo. However, in the Aliens Life and Death comic, we saw a xenomorph queen who had been infected with the substance. She underwent some drastic changes as far as her appearance was concerned, but more importantly, she started laying defected ovomorphs before she stopped laying them overall. The facehuggers that came out of these were all stunted and died soon after hatching. I, the pathogen creature, Stalker and Pauper. The game Aliens Fireteam Elite features not only the traditional xenomorphs, but also introduces two new pathogen creatures. The first of these, a formidable adversary, is known as the Stalker. It resembles a neomorph and hellhound hybrid. With its razor-sharp claws and massive maw, this beast proves to be a difficult opponent for even the most skilled of fighters. Adding to its already impressive arsenal, the Stalker is capable of blending into its surroundings, a skill likely inherited from its original host on the planet LV-895. The second creature, dubbed a Pauper, is a smaller yet no less dangerous foe. This seemingly harmless creature has a white skin and long legs, reminiscent of a headcrab from Half-Life. However, when threatened, the Pauper attacks en masse and explodes in a violent rain of acid, causing significant damage to anything nearby. Marvelous Verdict in conclusion, the black goo remains an enigma in the xenomorph universe. Its origins, purpose, and effects on various biomes and lifeforms continue to be the subject of much speculation and intrigue. Despite the numerous appearances of the substance in various media, its true nature and capabilities remain shrouded in mystery. And perhaps that is what makes it so fascinating. The black goo represents the unknown the unexplained, and the unexpected. As long as the mystery of the black goo remains unsolved, the Xenomorph universe will continue to captivate and thrill audiences with its limitless potential and unpredictable surprises. And it will allow fans to debate and discuss the various aspects of the world of these slimy and acidic biometallic monsters. That's it for today, but if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, be safe out there, and have a marvelous day. Yeah. <laughs>